So this is the second part of the video for the Crossman ST1. Uh, first, I'll go over the magazine, as you see here. Somewhat looks similar to the DPMS and the R1 magazines, but the the overall shape of it is it's uh it's pretty huge. It's pretty it's pretty large. Um, here's the cover for the CO2 cartridges, and the opening here for the hopper, which. You push that forward and lift. So, um, what you don't notice is that with this close, you cannot remove the Allen key that's given to you. So you have to open it to remove the Allen key. Um, and of course, to remove the Allen key. You have to open this and then, of course, put in your CO2 cartridges. This one's first, this one's second, your usual. Um, but if you're not really going to shoot a lot, you're just going to do some single shot plinking, you can actually just run this off of one CO2 cartridge. You don't need both of them. But that's the cartridge. Here are the witness hose here. Um, again, very difficult to see when it's fully loaded and to load them you basically pull up on the latch here shake it and push it down that's the magazine here's the barrel extension um, it's got a little bit of weight to it and that's the inside you can see the lock and how you rotate it so basically uh, let's see here if I can get it right here Insert it like so And push and turn And this is the latch here on top to that locks it in place and to unlock it So if I can get this on camera here Push that in rotate and it comes off. Um, for the rubber overlays on the grip and the magwell, as I was saying earlier, this one has already come off. It uses like some little pins inside that press into holes here, but it comes off really easily. And uh, especially if you hit it from the side on either side, It'll peel right up. On the magwell, this one's actually started to come up a little bit too. And it's kind of the same way, but you can see how they had put some adhesive here. But of course, it's no longer sticking. So you either have to apply some more or just make sure you keep it pressed in. Uh, on that charging handle, you can see the size of it. And you can see the shape of it. It's a sharp point. Um, not cool, but it works. Um, it does have a little grip area right here where you, for your finger. But um, it'd be nice if it was larger and more rounded on this edge end right here. Um, the plastic is it's solid. It's built like a tank. And unlike the other previous models, um, you cannot disassemble this unless you actually take the screws out and split the two halves. Uh, the little pin here in the back, this pin here, it's not for a takedown, but what it will do is, it is captured when you pull the pin. As you can see, the stock buffer tube is removed. This is the button here to press to adjust the two position stock. And you can kind of see how already it's being discolored from my hand on the grip there. 
which it might be to be be able to be cleaned up but who knows I don't really care um, a UTG my uh, riser mount um, I don't like my sights optics being too low to the rail so I kind of lift them up a little bit and the Magpul um, hand stop that I attach to the front um, I don't like to use a full grip magwell grip so and you can see the discoloration here from my hands I basically bring my hand up on it like this and that's how I shoot it so um, the trigger has actually loosened up a little bit so it's not as stiff as it was um, better shot at that enlarged magazine release which is kind of nice the ambi safety which is awesome I give them praises on that one um, I'm a fan of ambi safety so I use them a lot on the ARs and a better shot at that three lug and the front of the barrel extension and next we'll do some shooting <laughs> 